Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Business Leaders Roundtable, Unlocking Digital for Growth. In the past 12 months, we all know that our lives have changed tremendously. The way we meet, the way we have fun, the way we order things, the way we collaborate, and of course, the way we do our business. And there is no denying the fact that digital has been at the core of this phenomenal change. It's no longer an afterthought, but the thought itself, the core thought. And almost everyone is trying to find that secret sauce that unlocks the power of digital growth. But everyone is not so lucky. While some are getting it right, others are making mistakes and struggling with it. And the ones who are getting it right are the winners for today and for tomorrow. Today, I have some of these winners with me here. Some of them who have leveraged the power of digital and unlock growth. And they have been gracious enough to come here and share some of their learnings and experiences so that all of us could minimize our failures and maximize our chances of success. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Ashut Kasaredi, who's the Managing Director for India and Indian Subcontinent for Mayora India. The, brand, the company behind the popular brand of Copico Coffees, as well as Smallkist. Welcome, Mr. Achu, to the panel. Thank you, Ahmad. It's my pleasure. Next, we have Mr. Oliver Mirza, who is the Managing Director and CEO for India Subcontinent for Dr. Otteker. From sauces to dips to even your favorite peanut butter is all thanks to this company. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Mr. Oliver, to the panel. Thank you very much for having me here. Next, we have uh, a stalwart of the industry, Mr. Deep Malhotra, who's a chairman and MD for Oasis Group, uh, a very large conglomerate with diverse interests, including distillery, hotels, export, and power. Uh, a very warm welcome to Mr. Malhotra, uh, both senior and junior. Next, we have the dynamic and the enterprising Mr. Anshul Agarwal, who's a partner at Mysore Deep Perfumery House, uh, the company behind India's largest selling ag agarbattis, which is Manthan. Uh, Anshul, a very warm welcome to the panel. Thanks, Samad. Thank you. Pleasure being here. And we also have Mr. Rajiv Uchani, who's a director for Amar Products India, the company behind the popular collagen cream. Hello, Mr. Rajiv, welcome to the panel. Along with that, we have two industry leaders from the world of digital joining us from Google. We have Ruchita Tanija Agarwal, who's a head for new business sales, Google India. Welcome, Ruchita. Thank you, Emma. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And we have Tanvir Obroy, who's a director for agency partnerships and sales for Google Customer Solutions. A very warm welcome, Tanvi. Nice to meet everyone here. I'm really looking forward to the discussion. Lovely. So let's get kick-started the discussion. You know what? They say that habits define your future. And I would love to ask everyone on the panel, is there a new habit that we've picked up? And just by raise, raising your hands, can, has any one of your kids or yourself learned anything new online which you would have never done before? Has it happened for you guys? Yeah, learned, took an online class, learned something new? Great. I'm sure almost all of us. Uh, has any one of you learned a new recipe by watching a YouTube video? Okay, we have Ruchita, we have Oliver, yes. All right. And has any one of you taken a fitness class online? On Definitely, yes. You learned something new? Some of us, some of us. Great. So I feel in large habits change and consumer habits have seen such a tectonic change. So have business models. And let me come to business models here. So first, let me get in place, Anshul. And Anshul, I want to throw this question at you. All the disruption that has happened in a Black Swan event like COVID, has your business 
seen a kind of a change and what kind of changes have you uh, done in your business? How has it really evolved? Uh, so, Ahmed, uh, a lot of things have changed, uh, especially after COVID. The whole thought process around uh, how we market our business and how we want to be present in front of customer has changed because the customer habit has changed. Now the customer is spending more time on digital means and we, I mean, for advertising, you have to be where the customer is. You cannot advertise on an empty road. You have to advertise where the customer actually is spending his or her time. So in that terms, uh, the advertising and marketing means has changed. The way we sell uh, has not completely changed, but uh, slowly it's moving towards, you know, uh, the share of e-com in the total sales uh, getting multifold increase. So that is definitely a change that has happened. And uh, even the communication that we are designing now, that, the, uh, that communication is now being designed actually for digital. Mm -hmm. Earlier, we used to design uh, communication for TV, Okay. And then that, uh, I mean, digital was an additional uh, thing that on which that communication used to go. Suppose if I'm talking about a TVC of 30 seconds or 60 seconds that we used to shoot. Now we shoot TVCs keeping digital in mind. How will this TVC function? How will this video function in digital? And then, uh, I mean, TV is sort of an add-on for it. So definitely a lot of things have changed uh, as a company for us, as a brand for us. Actually, you make a big statement there saying TV is an add-on for us, right? Which... Uh, just generally for a brand like yours seems to be a larger tectonic change. I would love to get Oliver into this discussion. Oliver, would you agree with what Anshul is saying? Has digital now for your business also become one of the power houses to focus on? Yes, I would absolutely agree. I, I think we're not yet at that level uh, that we say that uh, digital is more important uh, possibly than, than advertising. Because advertising for, 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 let's say, for fun foods by Dr. Oetker from a mayonnaise or pizza topping perspective or peanut butter, it's still the mass medium to reach uh, the masses. Yeah, but this becomes more and more difficult. And uh, when, when earlier we said it's, uh, you could run an entire strategy just on TV, that, I think this is no longer possible. So now um, you still need TV for, for, for the mass and for, for the, you know, to reach the masses. But then on the other hand, in order to have particular outreach to, to reach consumers directly, to speak with them, yeah, to be more, more tailored in the approach. It is a, for sure, it's a need and a must to be, to be on. Okay. Oliver, you uh, is, is, that, uh, uh, is an important point of to, because I believe a lot of brands, we feel that to reach the masses, we require TV, right? And you know, being from a digital industry, uh, you know, having run a large digital agency myself, uh, brands across, somewhere I may not really agree that to reach the masses, you have to have TV. But I would love Tanvir's perspective in this. You know, Tanvir, you see brands managing uh, such large media spend to reach the masses. Is TV the only way to reach masses? What is your thought on that? Well, I see every media, um, you know, I'm a kind of fun functions and serves different purposes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we were in an era where we were at a era where print used to be one of our largest medias, right? There was radio that was emerging very fast, but TV has been consistent over the last few years, right? But that's again, prior to the emergence of digital and more importantly, the emergence of video on digital as well. Okay. Now, most TV platforms have their own OTT players. You've got YouTube, which is the largest video platform that currently exists in the country. It has a reach, which is uh, equal into the largest TV channels, which exist in the country as well, right? You've got a number of other video platforms that have come into the country as well. So it's no longer a limited reach game, limited to one media platform only. Mm -hmm. And I think if any agency is to look at a cross media planning, they've got to look at a cross media reach impact as well. Because digital now gives you the ad advantage of actually looking at deduplicated reach, right? So hence, you're able to go ahead and reach out to the most effective, the most impactful customer that you're possibly looking out there in the market. So is it the question the brands need to ask themselves is, are they looking at pure reach? Are they looking at effective reach? Are they looking at deduplicated reach? Are they looking at incremental reach? And that's where really cross-media planning and the impact of digital really comes into play. So I think we need to kind of move away from our traditional media planning methodology because the world has evolved. The number of screens have evolved. They become smaller. 
I'm actually taking this call on my mobile phone at this point of time. So the fact is, it's no longer the the age of 52 inch and 36 inch and 14 screens, right? That's a luxury. But most of us prefer to go ahead and use a smaller screen to actually interact. Okay, Tanvir, you make this point to define the kind of reach. Okay, and that's an important consideration for brands today. Let me get Achyut's perspective on this. Achyut, how are you really reaching your customers over the past 12 months? Have the models changed? How you're looking at marketing sales? Is that taking an impact for the better? Yeah. See, uh, first of all, even before COVID, there has been a change that has been going on. But the COVID time, the pandemic accelerated that change. The way the consumers are viewing, shopping, eating, searching, reading, everything is going through a lot of change. In the past, if you had one, you know mass reach TV kind of an approach, you are able to reach and be happy that you have advertised and you are seeing an impact. I think we look at it in a different way now. For example, during one of our recent launches, we were still in a distribution build mode, whereas we had better distribution in few cities. So we chose digital first as an approach to reach those cities while we were building for a bigger reach and once we had the bigger reach, obviously we looked at multiple, you know, looking at both TV and digital as the way forward to build both in terms of reach, but also frequency and like what Tanvi was saying, unduplicated reach. So it's uh, no single uh, recipe that could be followed depending on what, where the brand is and how it is moving, digital has a significant role to play. And we ourselves have been learning on this. And uh, the last six months has been an accelerated learning for us. And we see a lot of opportunities to build brands through digital first approach, which in my view did not exist about three, five years ago. It was a complex model. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about only reaching and communicating, but also in terms of making your product available through digital commerce or e-commerce. So when you see a mix of both, I think a digital first approach works for brands depending on what your ambition is for that brand. Lovely. Interesting you mentioned this word digital first. We've been hearing a lot about it, right? We have also been hearing digital only, uh, not just digital first. And you know, I would love to come back to Oliver. Oliver, with such a vast portfolio of brands you have, uh, is digital first or digital only a consideration for you? Uh, it's actually a good question. Uh, I would say not yet uh, because, um, uh, you know, he, the, the, the previous speaker also just made a comment that you are digital only or digital first and then you could uh, distribute the product also through digital channels. Uh, yeah, the idea, of course, is great, but the question is, what is the shelf life of the product? Yeah, so uh, if you keep in mind the shelf life of the product, sometimes it's just only, let's say, six weeks, uh, or sometimes it's maximum eight weeks when it comes to cakes or waffles, then it becomes a challenge in order to reach those channels. So then, then from, a, from a distribution perspective, the digital only would not work. Yeah, uh, but that does not mean that... that uh, that the digital strategy that would not work, but that means that the distribution through digital, that alone would not work. So you would still need uh, other means of distribution, uh, which is then the traditional backbone of India, which is obviously the Kirana stores or modern trade. But um, I believe, so, so we have some products where, where the shelf life is just two months. Uh, and and when, the, when, when the product are smaller or when the categories are smaller, I think then, then you would also not need, or it makes no sense to go on TV then I would, I, I can imagine digital only is doable. And we have uh, one or two such categories and we will try. Yeah, but we have not reached there yet, but we will try because we see that digital has become much more relevant and much more important. It's actually changing the lives of everyone, of you, of me, of all of us right now and in the future. It's gonna be even changing our lives even more and we need to, uh, we need to adapt to it. And I think, uh, yeah, for a classical advertiser or classical branded company like Dr. Oetker, possibly we are still too much on that old platform of, okay, we need to be on TV. 
and um, yeah, going on digital is, is like walking on ice. It's a little bit of unfamiliar terrain, but we will go there. Lovely, lovely. I think it's important that you mention that that's the future and that's something that... Uh, well, the future is already here. The problem is the future is already here. So yes. we, are, we are not fast enough. That's the challenge. We need to be much faster, but it's like walking on ice, you know? Great. So nice perspective, and I'm sure possibly Ruchita could add a bit to it. And I'm sure that a lot of brands might feel that getting onto digital is like walking on thin ice right now. Uh, Ruchita, what is your perspective? How can brands like Dr. Otkar and others ease their journey to become more actively embracing digital and really growing on digital? Is there something that uh, Google provides and what is your experience? Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, I'd, I'd actually like to come in with a few examples, you know, uh, to kind of really bring home the point that you're asking, right? So we let you know, we, we had many companies and brands who were in a similar boat as, you know, what Mr. Cassidy did, uh, described, they had a new brand launch or what, let's say, Oliver is describing that, you know, they had a traditional platform and traditional capabilities and, you know, they understand that the future is here, but, you know, walking on ice is never easy. So, you know, we've actually worked with quite a few brands in the last, you know, one and a half years where, uh, you know, the times were so uncertain and dynamic. Like, for example, there was this beverage company, which uh, you know, all of a sudden, because of strict lockdown, you know, had their sales really plummet. And, you know, this was a time when their uh, R&D team had kind of, and the marketing team had really prepared for launch of a new brand. And it's a seasonal brand, you know, so any sales that you lose, you lose for the year, right? It's not something that you can regain. And, you know, so we worked with that brand and we said, you know, how can we kind of reach out to newer customers who are still spending who still have an appetite to experiment with new products and, you know, how can we build a brand awareness, but also take it down all the way to purchase, you know, the whole customer decision path to purchase is also something that we wanted to build a full funnel strategy on. So that was one example. The other example, you know, to Oliver's point, right? Like there are a lot of these retail brands, you know, which were earlier, let's say only present through an offline mode. And, you know, all of a sudden that offline mode was no longer accessible by the consumers because of lockdowns, you know, so kind of really helping some of these brands to digitize and, you know, open their digital uh, storefront, if I can call it, you know, that was an area that we also stepped in and helped and, you know, enable them to kind of have an online channel. And in fact, one company, which is in the gift space, uh, you know, actually we were able to, within the first one month of, you know, enabling their online, you know, we were able to match, get them 50% of their sales through online. Wow. And it was at a much more cost efficient um, uh, manner than you know they were looking at earlier because you know also one of the things that we realized with many companies was that working capital uh, mm -hmm. also became uh, you know you had to spend your working capital more prudently because mm -hmm. you know you couldn't be spending your marketing dollars and not looking at measuring ROI right so also there was a focus on achieving marketing objectives but there was also a focus at the same time to optimize for your spend mm -hmm. and you know that's really where the power of digital you know the power of targeting the power of personalization the power of measurement that really kind of came in and you know this is you know so, so frankly the areas that Google uh, you know can step in and help can be many fold uh, depending on you know, the objective that a brand or a company is looking for, you know, if you're looking at a brand launch, then there's a different type of support. If you're looking at, a, you know, transitioning to digital commerce, then there's a different kind of support. If you're looking at a conversion based or, a, you know, like a, you know, outcome action based outcome, then, you know, there's a different approach. But, you know, those are those are some of the ways that we've kind of helped with some of our brands. Uh, because, you know, honestly, the, the transition as I think Mr. Cassidy also mentioned, and you know, we've all been talking about it, right? The future has been preponed by at least a few years. And you know, the consumer is uh, behaving very differently. Anshul started the conversation with that, right? So we all have to be preparing ourselves to be where the customer is and aligning our communication strategy and marketing strategy to be there uh, in the consumer journey. Richard, very well put, the future is here, right? And you mentioned about measurement, you mentioned about targeting, you also mentioned about personalization, right? When someone really looks at a digital strategy. I would love to take Mr. Deep Malhotra and Gaurav Malhotra's perspective. Uh, sir, has your brand embraced digital in the past 12 months? And uh, till what degree are you really leveraging digital? Sir, uh, uh, I would like to say something on that. Uh, that since we are in a, uh, you can say, in a product, category which cannot be made available on the digital stream. We are into alcohol. So we manufacture whiskey, we manufacture liquor. 
so legally it is not allowed to be made available in india so it it becomes a even a bigger challenge all those uh, you can say uh, sort of social media uh, might be applying to other services but when it comes to liquor industry when it comes to you can say alcoholic industry or uh, alcoholic beverage industry so uh, so the same thing uh, stops applying to our industry so for us yes we are aware of the fact that digital is a very uh, you can say uh, fast uh, or and and uh, it, it it is a very important role in in a marketing campaign but still because uh, see if uh, someone has to uh, do a marketing for a um, iphone or something like that or um, or tv so he has the option of going and converting that into the sale whereas uh, for us we don't have the option of converting that into the sale so uh, to be very frank we will always have a negative roi negative roi for whatever social media spend we might have mm. uh, social media or any any kind of online media on uh, so but what yes what it can help that it can help put my brand in people's mind i am aware of that but it, it is still going to be a very slow and a long road for me for for, uh, for the uh, product category i am in okay so gorav you mentioned about negative roi yeah in terms of after reaching consumer yeah. and that's a important point you make uh, i would definitely love ruchita's perspective on this uh, but in just a moment and before that i would also love to see uh, mr rajiv's perspective as to how uh, digital has really impacted his industry because i you know i believe that his vertical has seen tremendous growth leveraging digital uh, and bilkul <laughs> काफी सारे लोग जो है ना अभी जो ऑफलाइन ऑफलाइन मार्केट है वो तो ये पेंडेमिक होने के कारण से बहुत ज्यादा अफेक्टेड रहा बहुत ज्यादा अभी जो है आगे जो है फ्यूचर जो है पूरा पूरा जो है डिजिटल पे जा रहा है और मैं बिल्कुल उसके ऊपर मैं भी चाहूंगा कि अभी लेकिन उसके लिए अपने को बहुत मीडियम जो है गूगल है फेसबुक है या इंस्टा है दीज आर द मीडियम यू कैन गो टू फॉर अ डिजिटल और डिजिटल के लिए जो है सर थोड़ा सा आप जो मेरा जहां तक सोचना है ऑफलाइन मार्केट का एक बोलते ना अब जो पहला वाला समय था वो नहीं है सर तो डिजिटल पे जा रहा है और हमारी कंपनी का भी पूरा पूरा पूरी कोशिश की उसको जल्दी डिजिटल पे ले जाए ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म पे अपने प्रोडक्ट अवेलेबिलिटी हो हर चीज मतलब इजीली अवेलेबल हो क्योंकि आज आज का यूथ है जो नई जनरेशन है सब डिजिटल पे जा रहा है तो सर हमारा भी बिल्कुल है कि प्रोस्पेक्टिव कि जल्दी हम लोग इसको डिजिटल पे ले जाए और, और आपने बहुत ही अहम मैसेज दिया है कि सब जा ही रहा है और आप भी लेके जाएंगे और बिल्कुल जस्ट गेट इन रुचिता बिकॉज रुचिता Mr. Gaurav Malhotra mentioned about for his category, uh, can he really leverage the power of digital, uh, uh, you know, or will it be a negative ROI for him? So, how would you tackle such a kind of a, a brand proposition? Yeah. So, in fact, uh, you know what he said is exactly what we hear from many brands, and your uh, concern is very, very valid, right? And I also uh, use a little bit of Hindi and English in between. Uh, you know, it's very valid for you because your category is such that you can't sell online. Sell kar sakte hai. But I can also tell you there are many uh, brands who haven't yet come on the online commerce. उनके प्रोडक्ट अभी भी आपकी रिस्ट्रिक्शन है बिकॉज ऑफ द कैटेगरी बट देर आर मेनी अदर प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर स्टिल नॉट डिजिटली रेडी राइट ऑल ओवर आल्सो स्पोक अबाउट इट दैट यू नो दे आल्सो एज अ ब्रांड एंड एज अ कंपनी हैव टू बी फुली डिजिटली रेडी बट यू नो अगेन देर आर मेनी सोल्यूशन दैट आर अवेलेबल दैट कैन ड्राइव मोर ट्रैफिक टू योर ऑफलाइन चैनल्स टू योर ऑफलाइन स्टोर देर आर यू नो सोल्यूशन दैट वी हैव वेर यू नो यू कैन ड्राइव मोर कंज्यूमर्स टू अ लोकल आउटलेट यू कैन डिरेक्ट दैम दिस इज दउटलेट वे योर प्रोडक्ट इज अवेलेबल यू नो बट an important difference that we've seen frankly in the last you know one and a half years more i mean we were seeing it before that as well is you know that whole perception that used to be there earlier right that a customer that's coming on search 
translates to sales. And if you want to own, and you know, if you don't have an e-commerce platform, then you know you can't leverage search. Or let's say the other perception that has always existed is that if you want to you know, create an awareness for your brand, then YouTube is perhaps the only way. You know, what we are now seeing is that the overlap of you know customers, you know, moving from search to YouTube and vice versa is so much now. The overlap actually, as we see it between search and YouTube, is 80%. So customers are not only searching for a product that they're looking for, but oftentimes they actually look at something on YouTube, find out how that product is to be used, find out how the other customers' experiences have been, what the review is, and then kind of go back and you know look at what should they be looking at, you know, other other comparable brands, right? So clearly the whole customer journey now has multiple touch points. It's no longer a linear journey. Right. And I think that's an important point for any brand to keep in mind, even if you're not looking at, uh, you know, investing your entire marketing budget into digital. But I think what's important to know is that your customer, you know, whether it's the India one customer or whether it's the India two customer, you know, whenever they decide to look for a product or whenever they're inspired, you know, by looking at something that, you know, that propped up when they were watching something, Digital is definitely a medium that they're accessing for either research or for finding out what other customers are saying or for finding out what the comparisons are. And if your brand is missing from action, when the consumer is trying to look for this, you know, then clearly you are outside of the consideration set. And, you know, discovery is is definitely an element that, you know, can can be focused on for a brand like, uh, you know, Oasis. Perhaps I could say that, you know, are you... Are you there? Are you making your customers aware? You know, are you catching them at a discovery phase? But frankly, I would also that in their case, you know, if you were to look at the entire marketing funnel, I would say even mid funnel, you know, there are specific steps that your brand can take. Lower funnel can, of course, you know, the action can happen offline, but definitely there are enough and more solutions that can be, you know, spoken about and tested. And that's the other beauty about digital, right? You can test it before you commit full hog into it. You can run a few tests, see whether the results are coming in, and then you can decide to you know, invest further into it. That's the other beauty about digital. Vijay, you mentioned a thing which said that customer journey is no longer linear, right? And that's because behaviors have changed so much. The way we consume information, the way we discover products. Uh, I would love Tanvir's perspective on this. Tanvir, you work closely with so many advertisers across verticals and big advertising companies like Group M. Have you seen consumer behavior change drastically? Is there anything that has really surprised you? Well, I think that's, an, uh, that's a very broad question, Emma, and I'll kind of address it with perspective to the last two years because there's a certain amount of, I think, recency bias that kicks in as a result of COVID, right, and the whole pandemic that we've been in. Um, I think the best indicator of how a consumer really is consuming the internet or is consuming products is on the search patterns of an individual, right? Of a, of a set of customers. Now, I think the one thing that's very drastically changed is the search patterns over the last two years. One, because of a reasonable amount of internet consumption increase, uh, the comfortable nature of us now, you, you know, utilizing tech in our day to day, uh, the awareness of a larger age group with respect to the internet and the usages behind it. And, you know, three broad patterns really indicated how consumers are shifting, right? So number one, I'd say is that in the last two years, one very drastic change was a pattern which we call the shock change, right? What I mean by shock change in terms of search pattern was this was a sudden change which resulted in people looking for either products or for services or for commodities, which they would probably not do in their regular life. So let me give you an example. Think of the number of times all of us on the screen have searched for masks or sanitizers or gloves. Mm -hmm. Is this normal? Absolutely not, right? Yes, maybe for the medical professionals, but not for, for the normal consumer. So this was a shock change that really came in, right? The second piece that we kind of observed was something which we call the step change, right? Which was basically a set of searches or a behavior that started coming into play, which probably will sustain, right? Because now it's gradually becoming a habit. So for example, e-learning. We've, you know, you started this 
sorry did i did i lose you there just for 2 seconds yeah so uh, so what i was saying is for example you started this conversation by actually asking how many of you picked up anything online in the last 2 years e learning is a step change behavior gaming the time my son spends on online gaming is ridiculous right online shopping is now a behavior so this is probably going to stay and finally i think the most drastic of them all was the speed up right as a result of us becoming habitual to the internet and habitual to certain usage there were certain aspects which will stay for life now for example digital payments we don't hesitate now making a payment straight away for using google pay because it's become a habit for us so these are some pattern changes that we saw which eventually dictates where the consumer is moving to and hence we as marketers need to move to as well because that's where the consumer has also made a very valid point reach the point or reach the behavior which will impact the consumer the most and where you will find that most relevant right so true tanvir tanvir so i'm going to remember this as shock changes step changes and speed up changes so you spoke about right. it yes but what that's really impacts all these changes from a brand perspective is spends especially your digital spend has there been any change on that that you can share oh, there's been there's been, a, there's been there's been a rapid change around that not surprisingly uh, i think as platforms as well uh, all the digital platforms have actually gone ahead head and evolved very very quickly number one the digital consumption is actually just skyrocketed we are at last quoted over slightly over 600 million internet users expected to be around a billion by 2025 probably faster the rate we are going at right now uh you know our smartphones are going to be around 800 million plus by the time we kind of hit 2023 probably faster the rate we're going at the fact of the matter is accessibility screen types consumption habits awareness has increased and it's but obvious if the time is being spent on the digital uh the video you have gone on mute and you just unmute yourself Perfect. Then we we lost you at uh, you know how the spends are increasing this last five years. Yeah. So, so as a result of the you know the screen time as well as the number of uh, you know the users that we have on the internet being so high, not surprisingly, brands have also started moving their money towards the, the media which is most relevant to them. And as it becomes sharper, as accessibility increases, not surprising across sectors, it's no longer limited. to the few that we used to hear probably 3 years back it's cut across right business models are evolved they're digital first business models think about the number of d2c businesses that have launched think about the number of edtech businesses that have launched think about the number of fintech businesses that have launched understandably these are all digital first and hence media money is as well moving towards digital totally totally tanvir i would love anshul's perspective on this point on spends on digital increasing have you also experienced that anshul uh yes uh, definitely ahmed that is something that a brand uh, cannot ignore right now and uh, more than that it, it is there is also a fomo factor that you know uh, i mean it, it should not happen that other brands are there and we are left behind so you know as a brand we always want to be the first in the that race of you know taking that first mover advantage that is what uh, we did when you know it came to online selling we were one of the first brands to start online selling we were the first one of the first brands to take brand ambassadors on board and now when it comes to digital advertising again we want to be one of the first brands to register our brand there in customers mind because whatever comes first on digital the the whole brand perception that a customer develops around that brand is tremendous so we have seen uh, you know the reason why digital first brands or d2c fmcg brands have been so successful because there was no one out there and they just made their mark at the right time it was about being you know at the right place at the right time so the the more delay we do in getting there uh, the you know uh, we'll be left behind so for that again we have to make digital as a sizable percentage of our uh, you know marketing budget whatever we have and uh, every year it it it, it is not that uh, you know we can go all out in in the in one year so it's a it's a step by step process wherein it is x percentage in the first year and then we increase that x percentage the next year because we are getting results so slowly and steadily as a brand we move there wherein the total percentage of digital in our total marketing budget is increasing every year so that is for sure happening anshul also tell me uh, has going on digital 
help you understand your customer and your consumer better yes uh, definitely i mean the, the the whole mechanism of getting reviews of products it works beautifully online i mean uh, uh, the the we calculated the the amount of feedback that we get for sales is 16x uh, online as compared to what we get from offline sales because on online customer repeatedly gets emails to you know give reviews and ratings to products and we get really good insights from there i mean uh, I, i mean we analyze all the reviews there's a team that analyzes all the reviews and we get good insights as in which fragrances the customer is liking earlier we used to get these insights only from our distributors or only from our sales team now we are getting this insight directly from the customer so that is a big thing i mean as a brand you get connected to customer directly and that can happen only in digital so that is i believe uh, a very big thing no thank you for that anshul oliver would you agree with anshul and has dr rotiker also gone closer to customers leveraging digital in any manner uh, yes i would i would agree with anshul uh, so it's 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 uh, of course we are also on on digital channels on ecom channels uh, in fact uh, the the before the pre pre covid levels the the importance of the ecom channel was about 3% it has gone uh, at the peak it was it was about 10% of the sales that means 90% is still not ecom but you can see the positive side is 10% was already ecom so it's quite quite strong and and i would also agree with anshul that um you get a lot of insights uh, when it comes to reviews so whether we are Uh, our own seller so we also started being our own seller on um, on amazon but it has its limitations because we are foreign direct investment uh, so only the products that we manufacture ourselves we can sell uh, but we are also present through amazon itself or to flipkart or to big basket uh, and 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 we study the reviews but it, it is it is a question of mindset yeah you know? and and we need to change our mindset so so we last year for example we launched before the lockdown I think in December 2019 or January 2020 we launched a product an all natural peanut butter and um, and some of the product was 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 not stable there was a, because there's no emulsifier in it and no stabilizer there was an oil separation happening which is normal in the product but somehow you know the old pattern to look at this is to to look at the consumer database how many people have called up and how many people really complained and it is just a different mindset to to start thinking yeah why do I why do I go Why do I have to ask? Why do I have to ask the distributor? Why do I need to look at the consumer statistic of somebody calling me? Why don't I just look into the Amazon database and see what reviews I get? Yeah. So that that is a question of mindset. We all need to change our mindset towards towards digital thinking, which I think a lot of people have not done. And we are, I would say, we are on that journey, but uh, we have not reached the destination. If at all there is a destination, probably there is no destination. This is the journey which never ends. um and 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 we just need to get the act together that's what i'm saying we we i think we are not yet ready but we are we acknowledge that we have to get ready and we are on the way um and yes uh, what anshul says i i absolutely agree with that lovely lovely to know that you're on the journey achut are you also on this journey and has you know di- different digital sales channel been implemented by your business uh, to increase sales in any manner and how is that really impacted yeah um absolutely i think uh, both the speakers uh, anshul and oliver made some very good points in our case the way we looked at this is uh, digital offers you certain opportunities to pick and choose and even try some products before you go broader so we have uh, you know taken this approach of identifying few brands which we always wanted to bring in from our parent company in indonesia but we were not too sure whether we should go broader and how the response would be so the approach we have taken is the as i said the digital first approach with some of these products and we could pick and choose the market where we wanted to launch no need to go all india you can choose one or two metros or 10 lakh plus population towns so we have tried out and we have seen that it gives us a phenomenal opportunity to understand what the consumers are uh you know how they are reacting to this offer and uh, what needs to be fine tuned before we go broader and invest big bucks of an all india distribution and things like that uh 
So we are seeing an, uh, you know, if I may use the word, a nice way to do a very cost-effective test marketing of your product, which is a very new perspective, right? Because uh, end of the day for confectionery and biscuits, these are mass distributed products. Mm -hmm. Before you go mass, if there is a way you can be 100% sure, I think uh, why would you not get onto the journey and embrace it? I think uh, we've seen that uh, as an additional advantage that we are seeing. Of course, the fact remains that, you know, people still have a lot of questions, uh, whether it is effective, whether I can use it for this, you can, I think everything depends on what's the brand offer, what's your ambition, and how do you go about doing it in a very cost-effective way? And some of it is also going to be learning on the fly. One should not hesitate to get onto the journey and learn on the fly. Great, Achit. You read, read Oliver's point on being on this journey for digital, uh, and that's heartening to know. Uh, I would love Rajiv's perspective. Rajiv, aapke, uh, tajurbe mein, aapke experiences mein aisa hua hai ke jo digital pe aapne ka ke hum sab ja rahe hain, brands ja rahe hain, aur aap kabhi brand gaya hai. Iski wajay se ke aapke sales increase hoi hain, क्या आप ई-कॉमर्स कर रहे हैं या मार्केट कर रहे हैं अपने खुद वेबसाइट्स पे जी अभी तक जो है अभी तक हमारा जो दायरा था आपकी आवाज कम आ रही है कर रहे हैं मैं बोल रहा हूं अभी तक अहमद जी जो हम जो है अभी तक हम प्रिंट आवाज कम आ रही है आपकी आवाज कम आ रही है सुनाई नहीं आ रहा है आर यू गेटिंग वॉइस यस नाउ इट्स वेरी अपकोर्स हां आ रही है मैं बोल रहा हूं सर अभी तक जो है हम लोग प्रिंट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक दोनों मीडियम्स पे काम कर रहे हैं बाकी जो आगे जो फ्यूचर है दैट्स द डिजिटल फ्यूचर तो सर अब बिल्कुल उसी पे जाकर मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है जो आगे फ्यूचर जो है फ्यूचर डिजिटल पे है तो बस अब अब वे अब हमने अब ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म और अपना वेबसाइट ये सब चीजों पे काम करना जा रहे हैं और उसी के ऊपर अब क्योंकि जो ये सब चीजें होने से काफी जो है बिजनेस में जो है ना ग्रोथ मिलेगा और जो जो ऑफलाइन मीडियम है ऑफलाइन जो उससे उससे नेटवर्क से तो काम हो रहा है बाकी अभी काफी सारे जितने भी यूथ हुआ है ये ये सब चीजें जितना भी परचेस परचेसिंग हुई अपन सबसे पहले अपन अमेजोन फ्लिपकार्ट स्नैपडील सबसे पहले आदमी यहाँ सर्च करता है कोई भी प्रोडक्ट छोटा बड़ा हर कोई प्रोडक्ट खरीदने के लिए तो सर आप डिजिटल मीडियम पे पूरी पूरी तरह जो जैसा आपने बताया ना कि स्पेंड बढ़ाना है ग्रेजुअली और इससे हंड्रेड परसेंट सेल में ग्रोथ आएगा बिल्कुल और आप राजीव कर रहे हैं अभी फिलहाल डिजिटल पे मार्केटिंग कर रहे हैं थोड़ा बहुत थोड़ी बहुत शुरुआत है सर अभी इनिशियल स्टेज पर है अभी हमारी हमारी टीम कर रही काम और जल्दी ही हम एक से दो महीने के अंदर पूरी तरह से डिजिटल पे काफी सारा आ जाएगा जितने भी मीडियम से आपके सर यस कोई ऐसी चीज है जिस जो आपको रोक रही है और डिजिटल के तरफ और जोरों शोरों में आने से नहीं सर ऐसा तो कुछ भी नहीं सर कोई रोक तो नहीं रही सर एक बोलते हैं ट्रेडिशनल सोच वही रोक रही बाकी कुछ नहीं सर ट्रेडिशनल सोच जो इस सोच को दूर करना है अगर हम इस सोच को दूर करें तो फिर यू नो लॉट ऑफ ग्रोथ कैन बी अनलॉक्ड यस 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 बिल्कुल दीप मिस्टर दीप मल्होत्रा मिस्टर गौरव मल्होत्रा आप क्या राजीव की बात से सहमत हैं मुझे तो आप ये सारे पैनलिस्ट से या आप लोगों से मैं तो यही रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि आप हमें ये सजेस्ट कीजिए कि एक आज के युग को देखते हुए कितने परसेंट डिजिटल मीडिया पे स्पेंड करना चाहिए ठीक है टोटल बजट का परसेंटेज जो हो तो वो अंदाजा ठीक ठाक सब करने के लिए कितने परसेंट स्पेंड उस पे करना चाहिए ये बहुत ही बहुत ही सटीक क्वेश्चन है और इसका आंसर तनवीर से अच्छा कोई नहीं दे सकता तनवीर वुड यू लाइक टू शेयर के ब्रांड जो हैं बिकॉज आप इतने सारे ब्रांड्स को देखते हैं अक्रॉस कैटेगरीज वॉट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ द टोटल मार्केटिंग बजट दैट ब्रांड्स आर पुटिंग ऑन डिजिटल and this may vary from a large brand to a emerging brand so can you share a bit more on this so i think it depends i think it's a very valid question for any marketer or any business head to ask right because it eventually they want um that money to work for them as brands as well so it differs very drastically across categories uh, as i had mentioned a lot of the digital first brands are obviously very skewed extremely skewed app brands are very skewed understandably because it's a digital first brand so they're in the excess of 60 70% depending on the kind of brand and this is could be across fintech t2c etc when we go more towards the traditional brand specifically so if you look at uh, let's say retail okay it could be in the region of around 20% uh, 
if you look at cpg which is your fmcg products it could range again there are certain brands as low as 10% but there are also seen we've also seen a number of brands especially the newer brands and uh, you would know this you've taken care of beardo for example as a as an organization amit uh, as a brand they their digital spends were, were reasonably high right which is in the excess of around 20 25 30% as well so it actually differs my recommendation for any new brand to come in is is to first start with a certain amount of test budgets in some test markets see the impact it drives for you we are very confident and i speak on behalf of ruchita and me we are very confident that it works provided you go ahead and utilize the right platforms right so for example in his case it's probably youtube is the most relevant platform because of certain policies etc and in as long as they meet those policies youtube is probably the most relevant platform uh for certain other other brands where you have the option to go down the search route and the display route etc as well there is an ample opportunity for you to go ahead and index a diverse set of products as well so i would say it ranges honestly amit it's a very broad question but you know offline we'd be happy to connect with uh, with, with with the oasis group and actually understand what their needs are so as to help them come on board the digital journey as well i think that'll be lovely yeah go ahead please go ahead Yeah, one more thing I would like to say is that uh, since uh, our brand, uh, we are allowed a certain extent of surrogacy advertisement. So, so uh, for uh, us to do that, uh, it is fine. We are we are doing uh, our all season whiskey ad on TV and all that stuff. We are doing. We are also doing a very small amount on uh, social network and on uh, social media. but what i'm trying to ask you that uh, how long uh, how long would it be valid for me to you can say uh, come to a point that okay it will start showing me the uh, ro um, roi part since i would not be having it immediately so uh, okay if i want to sell a tv or iphone uh, like i said that earlier so the uh, result would be immediate now for me to divert my customer from my chair to the nearest liquor shop and pick getting him pick my bottle so it it is going to be a very big long road with lots of ups and downs and after that uh, after that picking up one bottle would i be uh, there okay if social media has made one bottle of sale example i'm just giving an example so uh, for me it becomes very tough to uh, you can say access social media uh, and uh, to access the uh, social spending and uh, if many companies are saying that they are spending 20% of their budgeting so um, it it makes a very difficult for me to decide what to spend and what what not to spend and what to yeah. expect and what not to expect fair fair gorav you i think asked this question on behalf of a lot of brands okay how do i get roi from digital how do i know if there's a incremental sale okay especially if i'm not selling online how is it because of digital right and here i would love uh, you know to get in ruchita's perspective uh, ruchita you spoke about measurement briefly when you're talking about measurement personalization how do brands measure in this case how 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 can you be more confident about roi yeah absolutely so in fact one first of all i want to acknowledge that what order said that it's going to be a long road or i i definitely agree it's going to be a road i don't think it's going to be a long road necessarily and what i can actually tell him is that you know there are many milestones that can be measured to make sure that the journey is going to be fruitful at the end right so let's say when one word to a brand like this if they were to start with a brand awareness campaign like tanvi was saying right given their uh, you know category specific category there are certain policies that have to be adhered to you know but let's say they're already doing some surrogacy uh, ads on tv right so if one were to start their journey with that there are lots of metrics like you know ad recall uh brand lift surveys brand lift considerations you know so all of those measurements can be interspersed on that journey you know to kind of show to both mr deep alotra and you know and and similar brands right like as to 
is this working for you or not? And, you know, I'd like to just borrow, you know, again, what Mr. Cassidy was saying, right? Digital is actually that one powerful medium that allows you to test. And, and that's what we would encourage that, you know, start small, define what success looks like. At the beginning of the journey, the success will not, it would not be right to measure success by sales to begin with, right? Because first your brand has to be known to the consumer. Then it has to show up in the consideration set, right? The customer has to be inspired to want to, you know, look at your ad, right? And there are different formats of ads that we have, right? There are skippable ads. There are, you know, those which kind of also show you that is the customer interested in your brand? Is that leading to, you know, a conversion metrics or website visit or, you know, looking at the content, right? Is the customer seeing, um, you know, the entire ad completely? So I think there are, there are milestones that one will have to build in the plan. Uh, those milestones will have to be agreed upfront. And, you know, if those milestones are delivering results, then, you know, again, on behalf of, you know, our entire team, I can commit that, you know, the end result of sales will also happen. And, you know, we work with many brands, uh, in fact, even in their space, frankly, very, uh, you know, in the spirit space as well, we worked with some brands uh, where, you know, we worked with surrogate uh, content that they've created. And, you know, that has really helped them in, uh, you know, achieving the sales metrics that they want to drive, but it's a journey. One has to plan it like a full-fledged journey. And the way I'd like to actually conclude this is that even when let's say brands, traditional brands have looked at traditional media work for them. Uh, I don't think traditional media also would have given them an experience that they put in an ad one day, whether it's a weekend, whether it's print, whether it's anything else that it gave results the next day, right? Even on traditional media, it is a journey. And therefore, in that context, digital is no different. And one has to be mindful of that when one begins the journey. But it's important to, you know, be committed to the journey because you can't like leave it in between because then what you're doing is you're actually leaving a customer halfway there and therefore measuring the impact of what you would originally spent is going to be very difficult. In fact, you know, if I can just also say that, you know, we've also worked, we've seen in our research that, you know, when brands have, let's say, only run uh, an awareness campaign or a consideration campaign or an action campaign in isolation, the results or the conversions of that are limited, whereas the impact can be increased many fold if the, you know, uh, the campaigns are a blend of everything, you know, it covers a full funnel from awareness, consideration to action, the results get increased many, many fold. So, Richita, staying committed to the journey is important. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anshul's perspective on this one, especially from a yeah. brand perspective. Anshul, have you stayed true to the journey? And what is your experience in measuring ROI? So uh, I would totally agree with Ruchita here. And uh, as Gaurav's concern was, uh, will my marketing spend convert into sales? I mean, that issue exists with tradi traditional media also. It, it, will, it never happens that for a traditional brand like ours, Z Black has been there for 30 years. So if uh, when we started TV advertising, I mean, that directly doesn't, uh, uh, you know, convert into sales. The whole uh, journey of uh, this advertising, be it digital, be it offline, is a very long journey and it's a uh, it's a perception that you're building for your brand right when when a customer sees your brand, brand 10 times digital or on tv he you know builds a certain perception in his mind so it is very difficult to even correlate uh, sales directly with traditional media also right the one way of measuring that roi is that uh, probably in one of the states or in one of the regions of one state i do only digital where I'm entering as a new territory and suppose say there's another state where I'm, which is again a new territory for me. And I go with the, uh, uh, this traditional media spend. Anshul, I think we've lost you. We'll just wait for a moment for Anshul to come back. Uh, but that is a very interesting perspective in the meanwhile, uh, you know, Tanvir, would you like to add a bit to the ROI discussion, which is happening? Uh, you know, so I think Ruchita kind of summarized that uh, beautifully, right? Like, there are so many factors that go ahead and define ROI. And uh, Mr. Malhotra's question was very valid. Number one, if you want any media platform to work, firstly, you need to align with that media platform as to what does ROI mean to you, right? Otherwise, it's going to be Chinese whispers, right? So let's kind of align on what does ROI mean to that particular brand. 
And this ROI could be different, as Ruchita rightly pointed out, at different stages as well. Initially, it could be creating your brand on a platform. How do you test it? You do a brand lift server. And you possibly get an idea in terms of how your recall is, how the stickiness of your brand is, and so on. And these are all surveys available online, right? Which you can use real time when you go ahead and run a campaign. If ROI for you means footfall into a, a store, then you go ahead and do a sales lift survey, right? Then you actually try and figure out whether your campaigns are converting to footfall going down into a store. If your ROI is to actually go ahead and uplift a specific market, then you try and do a mis mixed market test, which is what uh, Achyut was kind of alluding to earlier as well, right? Which is basically test the market, compare it with one digital media versus another traditional media, see what's the impact between the two as well. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very broad terminology when we actually say ROI. Is it eventual sales? Then it's, you go for a sales lift as well. There are ample number of methods that now exist out there in the market that can help you quantify your ROI as well. The question is, one, whether you defined it out to your partner, in this case, maybe Google or any other partner, and secondly, have you agreed on when you will deploy those best, you know, those methods as well to check for the measurement? And I think that's what I'd kind of, uh, you know, re-emphasize on and try and help brands focus towards so that we eventually have a win-win relationship with everyone. Win-win is what we all need. Uh, Anshul, would you like to add uh, to your point that we lost you while you were trying to complete that? Yeah, uh, I was just uh, saying that uh, the challenge that exists in digital for a lot of brand, traditional brand like ours and uh, Mr. Manohutra is that, you know, it is difficult to uh, say that, that that spend has converted into a sale. That challenge exists with the traditional media also. And this whole exercise of branding and marketing is a very long term exercise where you build a perception for your brand, be it you're doing it offline or you're doing it online. It's just that now that things are shifting to digital and you want your campaigns to be more efficient, you want to do it online. So that was my whole point. No, very well put. Achyut, would you like to add to that in terms of just measuring success on digital and how does your brand do that? Um, I think both uh, Tanvir and Ruchita made some very good points in terms of uh, what your brand's priority is. And uh, when it, you know, in our case, when we were launching a brand for the first time in a select market, we were going after awareness because for us, mass awareness within that territory was our priority. So we have set the uh, objectives accordingly and worked with, uh, in this case, with Google to uh, you know deliver that. So the written on investment on a, a campaign to campaign is something which I would hesitate to do that because, uh, you know, we are not here only for a short period of time. Business gets built, especially brands get built over multiple campaigns, multiple years. But certainly, as long as you are in the direction of improving from your previous campaign on your brand metrics and thereby your sales uh, numbers, I think we are on the right journey. So our approach has always been to look at the creative, to look at what has been the investment, to look at how the brand is progressing. And uh, so far, so good, I think. But the real uh, challenge for someone who is taking the plunge for the first time, I think start small. I think uh, learn, keep, you know, keep learning and improving and get the necessary confidence and your own playbook, in other words, let me put it that way. Every brand can have their own playbook of how to do. And that's a mix which will work for your brand and for your market to deliver on your uh, goals. Very, very well put, Achyut. I think keeping a playbook, keeping on evolving your strategy, thinking long-term, uh, I think are all very, very valid points. Oliver, would you like to add some points to what Achyut just mentioned? Uh, and it would be interesting to know as to how Dr. Otkar also looks at ROI from digital marketing. What is your parameter there? Uh, yeah, good question on ROI. I mean, uh, first we need to uh, we need to say what is ROI from uh, from a traditional media approach. Yeah, that is also a big question mark. 
uh, if ROI only means uh, yeah, somebody picking up your product. So, so we, we measuring, of course, ROI as a company, as a business, but then our role is to build value in the heads of the consumer um, yeah, and become the preferred brand. It doesn't really matter whether you do that through the traditional approach or you do that through, uh, through, through any approach. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal for us is not only EBITDA. Um, but yes, uh, I think um, to, to adding on to Archul is, uh, I think you just need to, you just need to go on, un for all these people like, like we, you, you need to go on unfamiliar terrain, but you just have to do it. There's no other option. And um, uh, holding on to something which is familiar is great. But uh, I think the big question mark is, uh, are we ready for the change? And then we need to in embrace the change. It's about agility. It's about adopting the change. And, and, and moving ahead now there's uh, and, and, and uh, seeing this seeing this change yeah, in a way it's a change from a traditional approach towards a, a digital approach seeing that change uh, as, a, as an opportunity not as a burden and seeing that as and, and, and adapting accordingly keeping your ROI whatever the focus is keeping that uh, core in, in focus uh, and, and, and doing that and not doing that too slowly I, I agree when somebody says you know if you're a newcomer, probably start limited, maybe limited. But I think one point is limited, which is important. But at the same time, don't make it limited in terms of agility. Do it with full agility. Uh, yeah. So the limitation should not be with the speed. It might be with the money, but not the speed. The speed must be full. Very well put, uh, Mr. Oliver. Emma, if, if I could just add a point there, uh, if you don't mind. I think the one piece that we tend to forget, which is about peeling this onion a little further, we jump straight to ROI, mm. but we forget the input metrics required for this ROI to work out. So let me give you a couple of examples. And I, this, is my, this is a question I have for the remaining panelists as well. Are you aware that currently 90% of internet users in the country, right? 90% of internet users in the country prefer to use their local language to search and carry out an online task, right? So a person sitting in Tamil Nadu, sitting in Bengal, sitting in Assam, sitting in Punjab, prefer to use their local language to go ahead and search and to consume content as well. However, how many of the brands over here actually have their creatives in local languages as well? Most brands still believe that a creative in English tends to work brilliantly. But the fact is, if you want stickiness and then you want ROI out of your creative, one, make a good creative. Secondly, make it in the language which people consume and understand it best. Mm -hmm. Secondly, for sales, how many brands over here have actually tested their respective mobile pages to ensure that they actually load on time. It's a free audit that Google provides. Have they actually tested this? So, you know, ROI is an end result. In order for that end result to work out, you've got to have those input metrics and that hygiene in place so that ROI to really translate into what you're looking at. And that's what I think Ruchita was also alluding to. It's a journey. It is a road. We're not denying that. But at the end of the day, there are milestones along that road as well. And you've got to go ahead and cross every milestone before you reach your end destination, right? So I would just say, urge most brands to look at ROI from that lens, a little internal and then external. And we you mentioned about, very rightly so, about vernacular content and how yeah. the are going up. What is your perspective on voice and video, the other two Vs that we normally talk about? Is that also a very important component of a brand strategy today? No, absolutely. See, the fact of the matter is the next emergence that we're seeing in the internet uh, across the country is uh, what Ruchita alluded to was as uh, India 2, or what we also call Bharat, right? Um, your next growth that you will actually see will be on the back of Bharat. What, what does Bharat basically mean? These are Indic readers, Indian language readers, right? They are mobile only users, do not necessarily have the benefit of using specifically uh, a laptop or a computer screen and a mobile. They're probably one screen users. A lot of them are also 2G users and 3G users as well who are very, very eager to go ahead and use new form of content. And what we've actually seen is that the emergence of smartphones becoming cheaper and the number of smartphones increasing and data prices having gone, you know, gone south as a result of geo, 
uh, the fact of the matter is that video consumption patterns have also increased. And hence, what you can right now communicate, what you would try and communicate through a text, if you can communicate it by a video, why not? Because eventually seeing is believing, right? So you, you use, the, use the power of AV uh, in terms of video. And hence, you see an emergence of a number of OTT platforms across the country, content on YouTube going berserk, number of content providers on YouTube, and so on. So it's never ending. So is, is video... The next frontier, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The second part is, as you are rightly asked, is the voice piece, right? Now, the fact of the matter is, when you look at consumption patterns as well, it's about convenience, mm -hmm. right? When you're using any platform, if you can do something with on the back of voice and be conversational, why would you want to go ahead and do that on the back of just using your fingers to type out a message? So it's very logical as well. What initially was a slow mover, but the res result of Assistant playing a massive role on all our Android phones, voice has become pretty much now a default, right? Kids use it, right? Because it's easier. Uh, uh, because of the uh, lack, the education issue that we've had in this country as well, voice usage becomes extremely easy. You don't need to go ahead and type it out in the language that may be a bit difficult for you to consume. So there are very, India's at that cusp, which has got, you know, which is which makes it easy for voice usage at this point of time, and not surprisingly, both these two media's are actually you know spiraling, rocketing up right now at this point of time. Lovely, important points there. Uh, I'm going to go back to Anshul because I remember Anshul, you spoke about when you're making videos for your brand today. Earlier, when you used to make TVCs, now you're keeping digital in mind yes. and keeping short of format. Can you share a bit more on that? Yeah, so uh, before that, I would uh, like to add on what Tanvir said uh, about vernacular languages and we, by our experience, uh, my experience, I can share that when we launched the, uh, you know, a pack of our Z Black Agarbati in seven different languages, though it was an operational challenge from manufacturing point of view, but then it gave us very good results because the acceptability of the product increases. And now our pack comes in seven different languages. The main product, the, the top brand that we have, it comes in different languages for different states, especially for South India, you have to have four different languages. And uh, what he rightly, very rightly mentioned that, you know, as a brand, generally we develop website for desktop, but we have seen that 70% of our uh, customers are consuming our website from their Android uh, mobile phones. So uh, that is again a very big point that generally uh, brands do miss out. And even the uh, ads that we are shooting these days, so uh, a month and a half back, we shot an ad with Dhoni uh, for our Z Black 3-in-1 Agarbati. And we were surprised to see that his retro look went viral the very same day. And this is the power of internet. You know, anything can go viral really fast. As a traditional brand, we never imagined that our brand and things associated to its a photo shoot or video shoot can go viral on internet. It can start trending on Twitter. So uh, I think that really helps. So this time, instead of shooting a 60 second ad, we have done five ads of 10 seconds each because we want to keep that momentum in digital because there the attention span of uh, customer is very low in digital even in traditional media he has so many options of channels that he will change it really very fast so you want to capture that your whole essence around your product and brand in just 10 to 15 seconds and that is the main challenge that you have to give the message also you have to show your brand also you have to show your product also so uh, it is easier in digital where you can you know actually you have a lot of parameters to play with and you can select like uh, Ruchita talked about skippable ads and different kinds of ads. So yes, definitely uh, having your media designed according to digital is helping and the same uh, media you can use in traditional media as well. Very, very insightful points Anshul there. Uh, you know, so I'm going to come back to some of the challenges where uh, Mr. Malhotra shared about ROI and we had, uh, you know, Ruchita, Tanvir and Anshul as well as it should share their perspective on that. Uh, Gaurav and Mr. Malhotra, are there any other challenges that as a brand uh, is a stumbling block for you to get onto digital? Uh, no. Except we, no. Uh, we, we don't uh, see any other major challenges. And yes, I agree by all the uh, expert of the uh, panel that even the TV media or any kind of media is a long journey. We have been advertising uh, for the last three years and after um, after advertising for uh, quite a long time. Uh, um, and you need to have the right product. It is not only advertising. Yes, we do agree that. 
uh, advertising or marketing uh, is not a wonder pill that we can have it and everything will be all right. No, we absolutely agree. You you need to have the right for product mix for the right category. And right. The product needs to be approved by the consumer. Uh, who is going to be the uh, who is going to basically in my in my category? Who is going to drink that bottle? Absolutely. Uh, so absolutely. even uh, my brand ambassador is Sanjay Das. So even after seeing Sanjay Das, he can only think about it once or twice. So it is not if he if he is not a, uh, liking the brand. So um, it is. I absolutely agree with everyone. Sure. But thing, but the thing is that. Uh, Yes, we are very much uh, ready for that uh, part of the digital spend and uh, digital media. But when we meet any uh, new people or uh, or you can say any any agency, so it creates a lot of confusion rather than simplifying it. Hmm. Okay. So it creates a lot of confusion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think you might speak for a lot of other brands. So let me uh, have my last question to Ruchita. Brands which are confused as to how to go about digital. I'm sure that everyone in the panel is very aligned that digital is here. Yes, absolutely. To take that journey. But there are certain apprehensions that we may always not have the beauty of this forum to come and candidly discuss anything. So how can Google help such brands ease their digital strategy? Yeah, no, so thank you. Thank you for that, Emma. In fact, I just want to come in with some very uh, interesting stats that I don't know if uh, you know the panelists have heard of this, right? So just kind of talking a little further about what the me was talk, you know, mentioning in terms of the trend of video, etc. Right? 95% of the content that's consumed on the mobile is video. Uh, 45% of the digital commerce shoppers that have come about in the last 18 months have come from rural India. Uh, and most of them have come in their local language, right? So clearly the stats over there are very, very staggering and interesting stats, which just came out two weeks ago. You know, his, we would tend to, all of us would tend to think that it's really the younger generation that's adapting to digital and digital commerce more easily because of their, you know, comfort with digital. Interestingly, uh, in the first eight months of this year, Indians 45 years and above have actually embraced digital commerce at a higher growth rate than they have ever done. You know, so clearly that barrier of digital is transcending all age brackets. So I think that's the other, you know, thing that I want to mention. And, and you know, obviously there's a learning curve and that's really where, you know, my team and I come in and, you know, Tanvir's team supports the agencies, you know, because the other challenge that Mr. Malhotra didn't talk about really is something that we hear a lot is the challenge of... Uh, readiness of the teams you know whether it is the in-house marketing teams whether it is the readiness of the agency teams you know because it is a relatively new space the expertise that is required to really make sure that your campaigns are delivering the returns that you're expecting in a cost efficient manner and that you're optimizing for the outcomes whatever your outcomes that you've defined right is you know this whole need for training and need for you know, building that experience and expertise. And that's really where, you know, Tanvir and my team come in. We do invest a lot of our time in actually enabling teams, you know, whether it's the teams of advertiser or whether it's, you know, teams of agencies, you know, the, the traditional agencies as well to really help them not only understand the basics of digital, but really also give them that experiential knowledge that can help, you know, the brands really you know, reap the benefits of the dollars that they spend there. So that's really where, you know, the power of uh, digital comes home because, you know, we can say what we want to say, you know, we can, we, it can always be termed as a sales speak, but, you know, we have to always uh, at the end of the day, deliver the results as well. And that's really what our team focuses on. Great results, results, results. Uh, and that's a note that we're coming to the end of this very insightful discussion, but I'm not going to leave you guys without knowing your one line mantra for success or your one line advice to other brands which are there. Right? So just in one line, if you can say what your mantra is, I think that'll be great, very insightful. So possibly Anshul, can we have your one line mantra? Yeah, I would say that you can uh, love digital for its efficiencies or hate digital uh, for its complications, but you cannot definitely ignore digital. Okay. Love or hate, but cannot ignore. Achyut, what would your one-line mantra be for brands? 
Yeah, I think uh, digital is there and uh, it's uh, never too late. Get on to the journey, learn, keep optimizing. And uh, I'm sure you'll get to a stage where probably you will have digital first approach. Lovely, never too late. Oliver, what about you? Uh, do it would be, my, would be my mantra, just do it. Just do it. Uh, Rajiv, what is your mantra? Mantra, what is your one line success mantra? I would like to say that yes, we should learn new strokes in the digital stream, uh, but yes, uh, definitely stick to base. Stick, stick to basic. Sure. Can we, what would be your one line advice to brands and what is your mantra? Well, I'd say that help us help you develop that unrelenting drive to break the status quo. And we'll help you innovate and handhold you in this digital journey. Very well put. Help us help you. And Ruchita, what would your one-line mantra be? I would say embrace the future. Digital is the future. Just embrace the future. It will, it will definitely be future. Lovely, lovely. Embrace the future and not embrace digital because digital is the future and digital is also today. So thank you so much uh, to all of you. This was uh, you know, very insightful and I'm sure a lot of brands would learn from our experiences and help them accelerate further. I leave you with my one line mantra for digital uh, and for building brands. Uh, and I say it's a marathon, not a sprint. So stay vested, ride the journey and you'll see success at the end of the mile. Thank you so much. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to all the experts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. for uh, doing Thank it so beautifully for, man for all your effort and doing it so beautifully with all the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Okay.